So today we're going to demonstrate how the Equatorial Mount Telescope works. Unlike the Dobsonian mount, which we can put down anywhere we like and just augment changing the altitude and azimuth angles, this telescope uses the celestial coordinates and requires more care. When setting it up, we have to point it true south and set the latitude so our telescope will point at the south celestial pole. We've adjusted it for the latitude of Melbourne and pointed it to the south. So now when we lock the telescope like this, it's actually pointing right at the south celestial pole. This telescope is very good for astrophotography and taking, looking at stars and tracking them over a long period of time because we can adjust the right ascension declination and then we can lock the declination and as it churns over right ascension, it will follow the star across the night sky. To adjust the declination, we start from our south celestial pole and we can move through 60 to 30 and whatever other declinations we like. And then when we lock that, we can change the right ascension and watch how it tracks a star as it will go around in the celestial sphere. Now this telescope is the fork mount, the equatorial mount. We know this because the telescope is mounted on two large fork-like prongs. The alternative to this is the German mount. Now the German mount contains, instead of the fork, a large telescope on the top here, and then the counterweight and rod going through down the bottom, much like you see in the diagram. Now this telescope, just like the fork mount, moves in the same way. So as we change the declination, it will rotate across that way. And as we change the right ascension, it will rotate around as well with the counterweight balancing it so it doesn't fall over. That's mostly it about the Equatorial Mount. These are great for astrophotography and anyone who's interested in automating their telescope for amateur astronomy.